خاکود و کراس و نو کجا نپاید می خاکود و کراس و نو کجا نپاید ام پیو نو باخر و تلو با باخر تو با کی تلو نتو با باخر تو با کی تلو نتو با Precious for human life. Let us make effort to save it. Good evening and welcome to Doordashin Kendra Kohima. I'm Ila Susan with the news. First, the headlines. <music> President Draupadi Mohan confers the Bharat Ratna on former Prime Minister P.V. Narasim Harao, who's to miss. Prime Minister Modi lauds contribution of Narasim Harao 
Chaudhary Charan Singh, Karpuri Thakur, MS Swaminathan. Union Minister Anurag Thakur says uh, Sports Ministry has taken serious note of alleged physical assault upon women footballers by coach. And India's foreign exchange reserves increased by $140 million. And now the news in detail. President Draupadi Murmu today conferred Bharat Ratna, the country's highest civilian uh, honor on former Prime Ministers P. V. Narasimha Rao and Chaudhary Charan Singh. Agriculture scientist M. S. Swami Natan and two-time former Bihar Chief Minister Karpuri Thakur posthumously at a ceremony held at the Rashtrapati Bhavan in New Delhi. The President will present a top civilian award of the country to former Deputy Prime Minister and veteran BJP leader L. K. Advani tomorrow in New Delhi. During the investiture ceremony, relatives of awardees have received the awards. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Union Home Minister Amit Shah, Congress President Malikarjun Kharge, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and other dignitaries were present at the investiture ceremony. Bharat Ratna is the highest civilian award in the country. It is awarded for exceptional service and performance of the highest order in any field of human endeavor. Moving on, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has lauded the contributions of former Prime Minister P. V. Narasimha Rao, who was conferred upon uh, Bharat Ratna on Saturday. In a social media post, the Prime Minister said every Indian cherishes what P. V. Narasimha Rao has done for the country and feels proud that he has been conferred the Bharat Ratna. Modi said P. V. Narasimha Rao worked extensively for the country's progress and modernization, and he is also known as a respected scholar and thinker. Prime Minister has also lauded the contributions of former Prime Minister Chaudhary Charan Singh, who was conferred the Bharat Ratna. In a social media post, the Prime Minister said Bharat Ratna is recognition of Chaudhary Charan Singh's contributions to the country's development, particularly in agriculture and rural development. He expressed confidence that this honor will inspire future generations to uphold the values of hard work, dedication and public service that Chaudhary Charan Singh epitomized. Prime Minister has lauded the contributions of former Chief Minister of Bihar, Karpuri Thakur, who was conferred the Bharat Ratna. In a social media post, the Prime Minister said Bharat Ratna to Karpuri Thakur is a fitting tribute to a stalwart who has dedicated his life to, to social justice and equality. He said, known as the champion of the downtrodden, Karpuri Thakur's contribution to the upliftment of the marginalized and his relentless fight for the rights of the backward classes have left an indelible mark on the fabric of Indian society. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also lauded the contributions of renowned scientist Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, who was conferred the Bharat Ratna. In a social media post, the Prime Minister said Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, a revered figure in the world of agriculture, is widely admired for his pioneering work and research in the field of genetics and agricultural science. He said Dr. M. S. Swaminathan's efforts propelled India from struggle to self-sufficiency in food production. The Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Thakur says that his ministry has taken a serious note of alleged physical assault upon women footballers by the coach during the ongoing Indian Women's League in Goa. The Union Minister said All India Footballer Football Federation AIFF, has been directed to take quick action and ensure the safety and security of footballers. He says the ministry has further directed AIFF to take strong legal action and inform the ministry about actions taken. Taku stressed that safety and security of players are government's topmost priority. In other news, India's foreign exchange reserves increased by $140 million to touch its all-time high of $642.631 billion during the week 
ended on the 22nd of March. The data released by the Reserve Bank of India said this is the fifth consecutive week of a jump in the overall reserves. The kitty had increased by $6.396 billion to $642.492 billion in the previous reporting week. Gold reserves increased by $347 million to $51.4 $487 billion during the week. The foreign currency assets, a major component of the overall reserves, decreased by $123 million to $568.264 billion. Expressed in dollar terms, the foreign currency assets include the effect of appreciation or depreciation of non-U.S. units like the euro, the pound and yen held in the foreign exchange reserves. Today is the last day for the withdrawal of nominations for the first phase of Lok Sabha elections and assembly polls in Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. The nominations were closed on Wednesday and the scrutiny of papers was done on Thursday. In Bihar, the filing of papers for the four parliamentary seats of Gaya, Aurangabad, Nawada and Jamui is the, is the first in the first phase of parliamentary elections ended on Thursday. Scrutiny of nominations in the state is being held today. The last date of withdrawal of candidature in the state is the 2nd of April. In the first phase, 102 Lok Sabha seats in 17 states, including Bihar and four union territories, will go to polls on the 19th of April. Simultaneously, single phase polling for 32 assembly constituencies of Sikkim and 60 assembly constituencies in Arunachal Pradesh will also be held. Among 17 states and four union territories going to polls in the first phase of Lok Sabha polls, single phase elections are being held in Tamil Nadu, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, uh, Sikkim, Lakshadweep, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Puducherry. The Election Commission of India extended the last date of nomination in Bihar due to the Festival of Holi and Bihar Foundation Day as well. Union Minister and BJP candidate from Nagpur constituency Nitin Gadkari held a massive roadshow in central Nagpur today. A large number of BJP supporters flocked to show their support for him. Gadkari is seeking, uh, seeking a third term in the lower house from Nagpur where Lok Sabha elections 2024 would be held on the 19th of April in the first of the five phase polls in Maharashtra. A two-time BJP MP from Nagpur, he will face main opposition from Congress Party candidate Vikas Thakre, who is currently West Nagpur MLA and Nagpur District Congress President. Rajasthan is celebrating its 75th Statehood Day today. While congratulating on the Statehood Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that Rajasthan is going to play an important role in building a developed and self-reliant India. President Draupadi Murmu extended greetings to the people on Rajasthan Day. In a social media post, the president said Rajasthan is famous for its glorious traditions, hospitality and rainbow culture. She said the people of Rajasthan have established their entrepreneurial identity across the world. Vice President Jagdeep Thangar, Governor Kalraj Mishra and Chief Minister Bhajan Lal have also congratulated the people on the state of the state on this occasion. Entry into museums and monuments has been kept free for tourists across the state today. Including this, a cultural evening has been organized this evening at the Jawahar Kala Kendra in Jaipur, where a glimpse of folk singing and folk dances of different regions of the state will be seen. Special arrangements have been made to welcome tourists at tourist places and cultural programs, lectures, exhibitions and other programs are being organized in the districts. It is noteworthy that the federal structure of Rajasthan was finalized on the 30th of March 1949 by integrating the princely states of Alwar, Bharatpur, Tholpur, Karoli, Jaipur, Jodhpur, Jaisalmer and Bikaner in seven phases. Moving on to sports, in IPL cricket, Lucknow Super Giants will take on Punjab Kings at Atal Bihari Vajpayee Ekana St Stadium in Lucknow. The match will begin at 7.30 p.m. Yesterday, Kolkata Knight Riders defeated Royal uh, Challengers Bengaluru by seven wickets at M. Chinaswami Stadium in Bengaluru. 
Put into bat first, Bengaluru posted 182 runs for six in the stipulated 20 overs. Virat Kohli's 83 runoffs, runs off, uh, 59 balls, was the highlight of the Bengaluru innings. Kolkata overhauled the target for the loss of three wickets in just 16.5 overs, riding on Venkatesh Iyer's 50 off 30. Kolkata Knight Riders have remained victorious in two matches they have played so far this season. While Royal Challengers, Bengaluru have won only single match out of three ga games that they have played. The India Meteorological Department, IMD, has forecast a fresh, a fresh spell of intense rainfall and thunderstorms over northeast India from today. It also predicted light to moderate rainfall and thunderstorm activities over northwest India till tomorrow with the possibility of isolated heavy falls over the western Himalayan region. IMD said that isolated heavy rainfall and snowfall are likely over Arunachal Pradesh, Assam and Meghalaya. The weather office also predicted isolated light to moderate rainfall over Odisha, Gangetic, uh, West Bengal, Jharkhand and Bihar. IMD has said isolated heavy rainfall and snowfall are likely over Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh, Gilgit, Muzaffarabad, uh, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand today. And now let's take a look at the weather reports of the district headquarters of Nagaland. Kohima today recorded a maximum temperature of 22 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 12 degrees Celsius, while Dimapur had a maximum temperature of 30 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 17 degrees Celsius. Woka experienced a maximum temperature of 22 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Mokokchung had a maximum temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 13 degrees Celsius. Mon had a maximum temperature of 26 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 14 degrees Celsius. Towards the east, Twinsang had a maximum temperature of 17 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 8 degrees Celsius. Zinebato had a maximum temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Pak had a maximum temperature of 16 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 9 degrees Celsius. That's all for the weather report. To end the news, here is a recap of our top stories. President Draupadi Murmu confers Bharat Ratna on former Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao posthumously. Prime Minister Modi lauds contributions of Narasim Harao, Chaudhary Charan Singh, Karpuri Thakur and Ms. Swaminathan. Union Minister Anurag Thakur says Sports Ministry has taken serious note of alleged physical assault upon women footballers by their coach. And India's foreign exchange reserves increases by $140 million. We have come to the end of this news bulletin. Have a good evening.